Hello, NFT hunters, artists, and metaverse denizens everywhere. This is The Twin. This week in NFT news, we have a great show for you today. We're going to be talking about Skechers. We're going to be talking about Estee Lauder, Board Ape, Yacht Club. Two new stories this week. A lot of really interesting things. VCon, some new projects, and a couple rug pulls. And what do we do every week? Well, the first thing we do is we bring on the stage my co-host, Scott Leach. Howdy. Howdy. Hey, so everybody, I'm Creatorius Rex. So we've got Brands and NFT Lands going to come up first. Uh, then we're going to talk about, let's see, meta. oh, we're going to talk about metaverses. And then because there's some marketplaces, metaverses, we're going to have a little news around that. And then we're going to get into projects. And we have a lot of really cool things, including one project that just yesterday nailed down 22 million USD in 10 minutes. Um, so if you haven't, figured out what that is yet you just hang in there we'll get to it um in fact you might actually see it in the background right now on the token <laughs> <laughs> so now uh, it's the giveaway but if you don't know what that is we're going to talk a little bit about it. all right scott what what i was thinking this week is last couple of weeks we've had like big news it's either been a lot of people selling so like the metrics for the market have been the big news or last week baYC four day Club yeah. was just killer they like, we had four big yeah. stories and this week it seems like there's more news than ever but there's no really big story and so wow to me that's like really healthy for the ecosystem so we have a real lot to talk about today and i'm pretty yeah. excited about it. what i want to bring up first is our our this recurring segment we have about brands and nft lands because this is something different than we've seen in a lot of other tech movements, whereas the brands are actually coming in a little bit earlier than they normally would in terms of adoption. They don't want to miss out. They're driving a ton of interest in this space. And the one that I want to bring up first is Skechers. Skechers this week said they have leased a space in Decentraland. It's going to be a store. The idea there is they're going to sell for sure virtual goods in there. You're going to be able to conduct metaverse commerce and uh, you might be able to actually get some, uh, you might be able to order the physical world and get those shipped to your home as well. What are your thoughts about this? Uh, man, I feel like I'm just doing a 180 on a lot of this stuff. I, as we've seen, <clears throat> pardon me, in other shows, I've been a little bit critical of the, the brand stuff. Uh, and right. it always seemed weird to me, the idea of a, a virtual store you might walk into. But there has been something I've observed with Web3 that when you get used to this thing of connecting your wallet uh, and you understand how that works, it, it makes it very easy and fast to purchase things. And I can start to see how there might actually be something to sh shopping in a 3D space and buying things. Um, so I'm getting more into it. Uh, for a long time, I was at eBay for a while and there was always, everyone was trying to capture this idea of, can you, what would it be like to shop with someone? Um, because people have had right. that experience in real life, uh, but it never quite worked on the web. Um, and maybe this could do something like that. I don't know. I'm more, uh, I'm way less critical of this type of thing than I was, um, you know, a month or two ago. Well, I, I would say I wasn't, as, here. I wasn't as critical as you, but I'm, I was, I'm more bullish than I was even a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that occurred to me is I've been thinking a lot about the website and web one and how that thing has been with us now for almost 30 years. Actually, it'll, it's really close to 30 years now. Now it's evolved a lot. Anybody who was doing these things in the mid nineties and familiar with that will, will recognize it's a very different world. But actually, over the last decade, all we've seen is these incremental changes. And the shopping experience is this discrete experience. That means it's intermittent. You see something, you mm -hmm. click, it's something else. And so there's not a continuous experience like you have in the analog world. And I just have this gut feeling that the website we know today is not the end of the evolution. In fact, it's at the end of the evolution of this phase that we're probably not going to see a radical change in Web 1 style websites, even though they're ubiquitous, really useful still, and it's going to take a long mm -hmm. time to transition away from them. 
But sure. I, I'm starting to believe that these metaverse spaces, maybe not Decentraland, but some other version of this could become first a complement to the existing Web1 website and then actually the primary way that people come in where you have this mix of continuous and discontinuous experiences. Yeah, I, I think that that's, that makes a lot of sense. I can see that. And I, I also think we might see some kind of hybrid thing where you... <laughs> It's like what happens in the store, right? I go to the store and I look at a review for the item on my mobile to see if it's what I should get, or I look to see what the price is somewhere else. Or I, so I'm shopping in the real world and then using my mobile device. It could be something similar where we shop in in a metaverse and then you still have a, a multi-window experience where it pops something out to your phone or to another screen. So it's it's not necessarily as clumsy as, okay, now I take my virtual shoes to the virtual register and wait in the virtual line to, you can have the best of both, right? We can take all the advantage of being able to navigate a 3D space and all the advantages of a, uh, a slick mobile or web experience to, to execute the purchase. Um, and then the Web3 plugged in wallet bit, like we, I think there's a way to mix and match this stuff to make it really powerful. The other thing that I think is huge, I'm obsessed with this idea of, um, street art in the metaverse and this like an ambitious artist could go like throw up their their art everywhere and get people to look at it the trick is you can't really do that because everyone owns their own plot but if i had a store like sketchers i might recruit people to say hey you can't afford these sneakers but if you hold up this sketcher sign or wear this t-shirt and walk around to central land you can earn point whatever amount that's, of that's mana brilliant. an hour yeah, let people do the advertising for you. It's and, like wrapping and your car. Kind of stuff. Yeah, right. so I think there could be a neat way to get to allow customers, allow users to earn coins to purchase goods from brands they like. Um, and I'm not, I know there's, uh, I don't think the metaphor should just turn into the big capitalist thing, but uh, it's interesting. It I think there's lots of interesting implications to what could happen already... that we can't see yet. It's already a capitalist. Yeah. I mean, it already it's is. Of course it is. Yeah. In fact, I mean, the biggest problem with the metaverse right now that I'm looking at for artists is they're all priced out of all the all the yeah. established metaverse spaces. So, yeah. yes, maybe you could lease something, but you really have limited opportunity to have some sort of persistent presence at this point, unless you're already successful either in the NFT space or in the yeah. analog world. Yeah, actually, some other ambitious person out there could go buy up a bunch of real estate and set up like an artist incubator in the metaverse and like host all this artwork. Absolutely. Anyway. And I think I think that's yeah. going to happen in some of these main spaces. Um, the one other thing you mentioned, this idea of shopping together, this was one of the this was one of the three use cases that I recall coming out when Facebook acquired Oculus, the third of which was gaming. It wasn't actually the first one that they were promoting. The first was the social connection so that you could be in the same room with someone who's half a world away. And like, maybe that's a slightly different uh, experience. You know, certainly we mm -hmm. have a lot more video conferencing now uh, than we had, uh, you know, 10 years ago. Um, but this would be some way that you could move around a shared space together. And one of the things they talked about was this shared experience, like shopping or doing some of these other shared activities. Mm -hmm. Uh, so maybe we're there. The one thing I will say about these 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 stores is I'm skeptical that the first ones that will be successful are going to be gated behind a wallet. So like Decentraland has a wallet access yeah. required. I actually think yeah. that the better op opportunity is some of these 3D spaces where it's more browser based. You just come in yes. and then if you want to yeah. do something, you can Crypto add boxes. your wallet. Yeah. Or you can use Stripe yep. to check out. It doesn't really matter. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. Um, although I also think the wallet thing's going to become ubiquitous fairly soon, and people are going to get used to it. But but you're right. I think that it it needs to be. There's already a high enough barrier to get people to walk around in a 3D environment. Um, yes. Making it as easy as possible to get used to that is huge. There's also yeah. other things here. Like I, uh, uh, a big part of my background is in user experience and UI for a long time I was working on AR and VR stuff and figuring out how to, what's the best way to interface with this. Cause we see, you know, the minority report putting your hands up and, and it just, it's exhausting. It doesn't work. One of the things we found when I was at eBay on this innovation team 
that a, a VR headset's a really good way to surface a large amount of product. So if you're looking at sneakers, instead of seeing a screen, I can now like look all around yeah, and see like a, a whole stadium full of sneakers. Um, there's there's going to be things like that in the metaverse that just make the shopping experience different. It's like a, any new platform, right? The, the context changes and it's going to be really good at some stuff, terrible at other things. Yes. But uh, yeah, I'm 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 letting myself. Uh, I'm opening up to the idea and I think there's some really neat potential. Well, just, just to cap that point off the, you know, I think of the goggle based experience is the immersive, the fully immersive. Mm -hmm. And then you have the, yep. the screen based, um, the flat screen 3d environment experience um, is non immersive, but continuous. Um, and I think for a long time, people thought we would start with the fully immersive and then it would come back up to something like this. And it looks mm -hmm. to me now it's going to go the other way and that we're not actually going to have those fully immersive experiences very much in the near term. It's going to be a very small percentage. But over time, people will adopt that as an augmentation to something they become already comfortable with on the flat screen. Uh, I Yeah, I think that that's probably true. That's where my my gut lies as well. I think we're going to see really neat. You and I talked about this before, but that token frame back there, if that was a, if that was a shelf in the sketcher store that showed me the newest sneakers each morning, and then I could hop into that store. There's lots of neat ways to kind of multi-screen the metaverse into, into our everyday real world. I have a different, I think are going I have to a different idea really for that, interesting. I'm going to save it for an, another show so we can keep going. All right. Uh, but yes, very interesting idea. Okay, cool. So the next thing, brands and NFT lands, Estee Lauder did a 10,000 NFT drop. It was a free giveaway. It was associated with Fashion Week in Decentraland. So Decentraland, a couple good announcements this week. They've been overshadowed by Sandbox, I think, for most of the activity for the last three months. Um but Fashion Week drew a lot of attention this week. Estee Lauder did this drop. You had to be at Fashion Week. You had to walk into the bottle and that type of thing. Uh, but it's just another example of you know creative ways that brands are saying, hey, I need to be part of this. And I think more important than what they've done is what they've learned or what they're learning by doing this. And mm -hmm. you know we've talked about some of these implementations, whether it be Pepsi, uh, which was not very ele elegantly deployed or maybe Budverse, which was much, much, much better deployment or mm -hmm. initial foray. All of these are learning opportunities. And I just expect what we're going to see this fall is going to be so much more sophisticated than what we're seeing today. Yes. Yeah, I, I agree completely. Um, I want I, I want to see real world stores start if you went into an Estee Lauder and one of their walls was a giant LED screen that, that was the metaverse store in, in real time or something, and you could see that and start to really like... It's like a QR code so that... You, yeah, so it have could fun with it. It'd be like a fly through, like, but then you do the QR code and you get to control it and then you just do your own thing on your phone. Uh, that's a brilliant idea. And that's the, mm -hmm. the offline to offline connection, which we've seen successfully executed in a number of different areas. It just hasn't been tried in this space yet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love it. Okay, yeah. so next one, but we'll bring up Floyd Mayweather. So Estee Lauder, you guys missed a nice picture of their NFT, but Floyd Mayweather, who has maybe a uh, less than pristine reputation in the crypto world because of some things he did around ICOs several years ago, is making another run of it. And uh, to, to somewhat mixed reaction. Uh, I think some people are willing to say, hey, this is like a new thing. And he was he was actually duped uh, as much as anybody else. He paid fines a couple of years ago around an ICO that he promoted. Um, and now he's got something new. And so some people are like, I'm not gonna get burned again. Other people are like, wait a second, he got burned. We shouldn't hold that against him. So 5,000 NFTs, there's five different cards, I think a thousand each and it's basically, you don't hear much about what the utility is, but it's going to be tied to the, the Mayweather-verse. So the Mayweather-verse, I guess. So there is a metaverse. The only thing they mentioned, I believe, is there's a boxing gym in it. What that means, I don't know. Is there going to be a game? Are you going to be able to hang out with Floyd Mayweather? Nobody knows. 
Uh, but I thought it was an interesting thing because Floyd Mayweather is celebrity, but he's really a brand and all the different things that he mm-hmm. does. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, just jumping on the bandwagon, but not jumping on someone else's bandwagon saying he's, he believes that he can go it alone and you know develop mm-hmm. his own independent metaverse. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's interesting. The, the, the history there. Right. I think, um, I, I personally think that that's at this stage, there's going to be lots of slip ups and mistakes and things like that. So I don't necessarily think there was any, he he was being disingenuous or anything to your point, him, him being saying he was being rugged as well. Um, one of the things about the brands that I always get, have questions about is, how involved is, especially when it's around an identity like this, how involved is he in it versus someone just taking his like likeness and giving him a bunch of money to do so? Um, that's always a, a question to me. And it, it just, meta, it, it, NFTs are hard enough. A metaverse is a whole other thing, right? Like what we, we're still trying to figure out what it means and how people are going to engage with it. Um, it requires... A, a strong development team, probably with a background in gaming, uh, just a lot of different skills and not to say that this doesn't have legs, but everyone seems to be doing it. It's, it's tricky. Uh, I don't know. I don't know on this one. Yeah. Um, fair enough. I, I think, I don't know is, is probably where I am with it as well. Uh, but I think it's interesting and we have an, in the sports genre, we have now a GT racing team uh, that is also uh, in the NFT space. Oh, <laughs> um, so uh, the GT racing team by, let's see, who is it? Laura Marie Geisler. So a woman racer. Mm-hmm. And she is, um, she's funding her next season fully with NFTs, um, which is pretty cool. And mm-hmm. uh, there's, there's a couple different things. She has just one of one of the car. And if you buy that, there's an auction going on for it. You get your name on the car and then she's got the racing helmets and she's got the racing suits and those are much less. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, that, yeah. that she's trying to do that. I don't know how successful I was looking at it. It looks like there's not that much action on it just yet. Uh, but Hey, it's a women led women led project. People are always looking for those. It's got a nice tie in for, for a sport that's really good at branding. I think it sounds pretty interesting to me. I think it sounds super interesting. And it's, I think it's super creative as well. Um, and I would not be surprised. I think there's going to be a window of time here where you have all these folks who have made a lot of coin during this period and are looking. It's all, everything's all gravy right now, right? So there's going to be a period of time where those people are going to be willing to spend lots of money on some kind of, fun and novel things. Yes. And I actually wonder if it ends up being like a single ape owner or influencer. That's like, I want my ape on that, that hood. Um, yeah. And I, I don't like remember. How, um, I don't remember how much it costs for the GT teams. I mean, it's like, it's, I think it's a mm-hmm. few million dollars to actually run that for the year. Maybe it's it, like the formula one or like you know, a yeah. lot, many millions, maybe uh, I'm probably understating it because I haven't looked at this in a long time, but it's not mm-hmm. cheap. Um, Mm -hmm. so I could see someone who just like got a lot of ape coin, (laughs) just spending that money to sponsor this, like own this car for the year and stuff like that. Could you imagine like Jenkins, the valet on the side of this? Be pretty cool. Um, Yeah. I think that, yeah. Okay. There's some cool stuff there. Uh, well, I, I, I'm, I love this is like, we've been thinking a lot about, NFTs is like the new Kickstarter. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, maybe, maybe that's, maybe that's a thing um, that, uh, you know, this is sort of like a Kickstarter. It's just, you don't get a product at the end in the interim. You, you get to support the, the team, you get your name on the car. Mm-hmm. Maybe you get to, maybe they do all expense paid vacation to some things. Mm-hmm. I think what they should do is like all the NFT holders 
is they should do promos with their other sponsors. They should do allow them to buy trips. You know, if you hold the token, you can be one of the 20 people who get to come to this race. It's like you can layer on all these really interesting experiences, oh, yeah. which yeah. gives you a reason to hold it. And then the next year, yes. you know, maybe to buy the next season, you have to hold the first season, right? And then the same mm -hmm. thing over and over again. So I think they could do something really interesting. And maybe this is a better way to monetize than the way they're doing it today, which is like year to year, they have to basically renew sponsors or find new sponsors yeah. to pay the whole thing. And when a recession comes up, you are in trouble. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's super interesting. And I think the, the stuff you're saying about meetups or going you know going to a race tons of utility opportunity here but that that piece and we've talked about this in other episodes but the the communities that can form around nfts and what it can do for you as a holder I, i've seen this on the the v friends stuff right the the hangout hawks all have their own right discord channel and they start then they form a, a linkedin group and you start to build a network of people that now depending on what you, what your career is or what your aspirations are, your network just got bigger. Um, yeah. If yeah. I was into well, racing and I had the means to do this, I'd be all about this. Like you're, you're like, this is a great insight and this is, I hadn't considered this. So first of all, I thought it would just be fun. Like you would get to go to these mm -hmm. things, you get to like affinity community. You're right. This type of sport, great networking opportunity for many people absolutely uh, because of the other type of people who are interested in racing um yes yes that's a really good one okay so let's move to the next yeah. one so this is xtep uh this is a chinese clothing brand so maybe the nike of china i i, I think might be right um, i'm not as familiar with the chinese brands in terms of the hierarchy there but they make athletic apparel and shoes and so what they came out with is uh, a couple of different things were interesting. So they have some new shoes, which are like, I think 1700 yuan. Uh, and I can't remember what that is in dollars, but let's say it's less than a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. um, and then they have NFTs. I'm sorry. They, they, the shoes actually cost a thousand yuan. The NFTs came out at around 16 or 1700 yuan. There's a thousand of them. So it's apparel. Um, it's for the metaverse. So they're going to give you, metaverse compatible nfts which metaverse who knows theirs maybe only so because they also said they're going to have a running metaverse what a running metaverse is i have no idea they provided no detail like many of these projects uh, but interesting again we see someone thinking that they can build their own metaverse You've got sketchers going into Decentraland. They want to take advantage of that centralization, the traffic, maybe the serendipity. When some of the other, other people are saying, well, why do I have to do that? Or, or maybe they're saying, I'll be there, but when I'm there, I'm sort of just in someone else's space. I'm going to have my own space too. Yeah, it's going to be super interesting how this all boils out. Um, like is a, is a metaverse... The, the capsule stuff associated with um, uh, Clone X, like is a tiny room, is that a metaverse? Because I have a teeny tiny room. This running thing makes me think of, I got this the, that Peloton bike after I broke my leg. It was the only thing I could do that was low right. resistance, right? And I, it's kind of neat how they have these, you can go to settings and, and ride your bike. As soon as you said running metaverse, I thought like, oh man, it'd be really cool if it was just a metaverse I could pedal through while I was on this bike. And I don't, need to it doesn't need to be huge like the sandbox or like the central land it can be a relatively small space i don't know there's lots of really neat implications when it could be huge i mean if you look at the scale yeah, of the yeah. land and mm -hmm. uh sandbox maybe not as much sandbox but maybe where mm -hmm. sandbox will be board ape is going to have two hundred thousand plots and in the in the initial two phases these could be pretty large. Um, yeah, I think that's a really good idea. And the running metaverse, like if it was tied into a treadmill or actually, you know, you wouldn't even have to do that. You could do it as an AR app. Um, mm -hmm. And it could basically just be on with your phone. And as you there move you go, yeah. through the real world, it could virtually take you places. Yeah, And then it would be funny because you see people like taking a right turn through people's backyards just so they could go to a certain <laughs> place. That would be a trip. <laughs> 
All right. So I thought that was interesting um, also because the, um, the, the Chinese government is pretty negative on crypto. At least that's, they've done that a couple of times most recently last year, uh, but they seem to have been okay with NFTs so far. So we'll see how that plays out. I could, you know, Although you use crypto to buy NFTs, so we'll see. We'll see how that plays out. Yeah. All right. So we want to yeah. go into marketplaces, and um, I was, I, I'm interested in VV. I haven't spent a lot of time there. Mm-hmm. I created an account. I've never actually purchased anything. I did. I think I did. I may have actually p- tried to buy one thing one time, but didn't get it, which is fine. Um, mm-hmm. But VV is its interest. It's its own marketplace. They do have a connection with Immutable X now. I believe everything can be exported. They've got this idea of gems and valuation. And it is really a big popular platform because they have like Marvel on there. And they've got a lot of, uh, they've got Disney on there. A lot, you know, the Pixar stuff from Disney. They've got a lot of big brands on there uh, mm-hmm. uh, with really popular media properties. Okay. So that's the setup. Um, they, they're trying to make a link to layer two of Ethereum so that people feel like it's not just a centralized yeah. web two, thing, right? Um, but they had an exploit. Now, a lot of people have had exploits. Um, they've had problems with either their marketplace or their Discord, all these things we're going to talk about. Um, but they had one that was apparently pretty significant. It had to do with the gems, at least that was at least part of it. And they were using gems to buy things and they're ex- they taking the money off to the chain and getting it out of there. And so this was on the 22nd, a few days ago, March. And then two days later, they're like, thanks for bearing with us. That's the first update that I could find. Like, I don't remember. So the timing exactly the second one, but let's call it somewhere like 36 to 48 hours later. Um, That's not a best practice, right? And could feed a little bit of concern about it. And then at the same time, they're promoting a new drop with Marvel and with the U.S. Post Office. They're like doing Twitter spaces. And, the, and they've actually locked the marketplace. People can't do stuff. So I assume it's going to yeah. be available this evening. We're on Friday. So it's, I think there's something at mm-hmm. 9 p.m. Pacific time. But what do we think about this? Or what do you think about this in terms of this setup and this context? My my gut, without knowing much, is this, this. It feels like the the byproduct of being a, a centralized thing, like different people with different jobs not not communicating well. And but does I mean this could that, happen just as easily if you were on chain, couldn't it? Yeah, it could. I think there's something about yeah, yeah. I think those teams are. Yeah, you're right. It, it totally could. Maybe I'm just the smaller teams you, you tend to hear about it. They tend to be a little bit more transparent, it seems, or yeah, Solana had it or, issue. or specifically opaque of like, we're not going to, yes. we're working on it. We're not going to give more information right now. Um, oh, key difference. Right. Because people can see what's going yeah. on on chain. Yes. Yeah. And um, actually if it's on chain, there's always these people who are really into it and they're always monitoring everything. You might know faster. Exactly. Yeah. Or they're also troubleshooting and helping to inform what's happening in some cases. Um, So, yeah. uh, It's not great in terms of building. I think the, the, one of the things I like about VV and what I've seen so far is that we've talked about before. I think, I feel like they're one of the, the projects that that's helping to bring on new people. So it, it feels like it's very aimed at collectors, right. Of, Of already existing properties. Um, and getting them to sort of hop onto this notion of digital collectibles, this is not a good look for <laughs> for that, right? Um, yeah, it it is, and like it is not, and like people have put a lot of money in there, um, but I don't think like I'm not sure exactly what the individual impact has been, other than lack of access. So I think um, mm-hmm. for the most part, like VV's taken it on the chin. Maybe some individuals have had some issues. Um, they're gonna have to make sure that like the gems that were traded internally, that they don't burn the people who are doing who are trading in good faith. Uh, but we'll I'll, I'll try to get some more information once they reveal it, yeah. and maybe we'll come back to this because you know, like Solana, yeah. remember they had the issue we talked about it here maybe four months ago, and one of the impressive things was is how quickly they fixed it 
um, how like people yeah. care, right? Because sometimes these things happen with these new platforms and no one cares, like no one notices, no one cares. Yep. People notice. And then they were very transparent about what had happened, what they'd done to fix it. Yep. Um, and yep. so I think that's the type of thing where I, my takeaway was, it seems like this is a bad thing, but it's actually a really good thing because it's just going to increase trust in Solana. People Absolutely. will understand having an issue. So Vivi has that yeah. opportunity. We'll see. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, look, if, if it, if the miscommunication or the kind of fumbling of the, to me, there's the, there's the bad thing that happened. There's the exploit and getting to the bottom of that and, and rebuilding the trust and explaining why that happened and how to solve it. Then there's the, the communication piece of how do you, how is it being messaged and does that, um, restore faith or does that make it even worse? I think that the benefit that a, that a, side or that a project like this has a centralized project is that they could also you know if you make a mistake on on the ethereum network your your stuff is gone that's it no one's there's no customer support um you know if you know what happened you can tell open and they might shut the person down but you're not getting your stuff back um yeah. there's an opportunity here like you said with the w where they could make a decision as an organization to refund some of those people if something did get lost forever yeah, or they can happen. just undo it um so it's that well, it's back to the thing we talk a lot about like decentralized versus versus not and what the pros and cons of that are well now open i think did they did actually reimburse some people who had an issue because of uh, a fault in the the way open was handling the listing yeah um, yeah like the open listings weren't being canceled and so they did yeah. not everybody was made whole but they did actually do that and um, was it the right thing to do? Was it good PR? You know, it could be all the above, uh, yeah. but you're right. Something like VV, even they could make it. So they're the only ones who get hurt by it. Yeah. Which would make sense because it's, it's the issue was theirs. It's in, and, and these things yeah. happen you're running a big software platform. Um, but I think we need more. We need to know more. We did. I think it's interesting to throw yeah. it up there right now. Yes. Think about what yeah. we know. The one yeah. thing I'll tell the people out there, if you're running a marketplace or a platform, communicate every few hours, even if it's just to say we're still working on it. You don't have to wait until you have all the answers, but if people don't hear from you, they think the worst. Yeah. Always the case. Um, yeah. And it's, it, it's a little painful because I'm like, Oh, you're incompetent. You, it's four hours. You haven't done anything. It's worse. If you wait 24, 48 hours and you would know information, <laughs> people think mm -hmm. much worse of you because they're like, Oh, yeah. did they forget? <laughs> Yeah. All right. So yeah. Next thing yeah. is another thing. GameStop. Uh, we talked about this a couple months ago. GameStop said they're going mm -hmm. to do an NFT marketplace because why not? Everyone's doing an NFT marketplace. Um, and they have the best Reddit uh, following out there of any anyone on the, <laughs> you know, trying to create a marketplace. So what could go wrong? Um, but they have a deal. Um, they're doing it on Immutable X just a couple months ago. They said they're putting this hundred million dollar fund together to, with Immutable to focus on on people running NFT projects. And they have who is it? I think it's called Loop Ring. I believe Loop Ring is doing the marketplace, and then it's on hmm. it's on Immutable X somehow, kind of like Token Tro is on Immutable. Sure. Um, yeah. You can connect your wallet, I understand right now. I haven't tried to do it, but you can't do anything. There's nothing in the marketplace. They said that it should be there by the end of July. It might be sooner, but um, sometime in the next four months, we would expect something to be up. But at least something came out, and they're saying, hey, you know what? Um, we made this announcement a couple months ago. Oh, and here, we've made progress. So it's not like you totally forgot about it. And to me, this is a really smart move on their part because – they're, if they make another announcement next month and then they start making them every other week and then every week up to it, they'll build a little bit of trust that, hey, there's something here and these people are serious. Mm -hmm. It's not just we did it for a press release. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm really curious to see what they do. Uh, I think everyone, when the whole uh, short squeeze scenario was going down and everyone was hopping on, the stock there was a lot of kumbaya around uh oh remember we grew up with gamestop as kids and they they were like our this kind of nostalgia angle um i don't i think a lot of that was severe cognitive dissonance my experience with gamestop from early on is that it was pretty miserable customer service 
experience. Um, I know there's new leadership there. I know st stuff is changing. I, I hope that they're thoughtful about this because there's a there's a massive opportunity here. And if they, it'd be unfortunate if it if it was something that was, I don't know. Yeah. Yes. If this is a thing where I go and I, it's like, hey, you want to pre uh, pre buy this game that's coming out in two years? Like, well, no, know. I don't think they'll do that. I I think they'll be more clever than that, but I'm not sure they'll be clever enough. We'll see. Um, yeah. All right, so that's marketplaces. So we, so our next topic today is projects. We're going to go through a few of them, and mm -hmm. you know I think you're going to be surprised at the next one because we're going to be talking about Gary V. And we never talked about Gary V. <laughs> on this program before. This might be the yeah. first time. Um, Who is it again? Tickets dropped for VCon. So we found yeah. these in our wallets. You get one ticket per. Um, per v token friend. you hold one for v friend uh -huh. token that you hold and uh, originally i thought they were going to do one for each day uh but they've just done oh. one for now. um because the idea was you would be able to sell a different a different day to different people interesting like, interesting yeah and so they, they, they haven't the done time. that but i was my my friend Mikhail Stanislawik and I were trying to figure it out. We figured that they wound up, they must have spent somewhere like 150 to 200,000. We have to look at their wallets um, doing the airdrop. Because I, I, I just assumed they would do these as 1155s. They did not. They did them as 721s. Yes. This was not And cheap. I think that's, yeah. I think that's what? That's probably why they didn't do three. I think it's... Well, I think it's also the token art reveal thing. I, I think some of these are going to have unique artwork depending on what the vFriend is. Or it's going to be linked to the individual vFriend in some way. Um, well, so this looks like this looks like to me, even though it says token art reveal coming soon. Um, mm -hmm. So this this item looks to me like this is the ticket. So this ticket will get you in. If you, this is in your wallet, mm -hmm. you get it. Now, the other interesting thing about these is um, they went up to like two and a half ETH yesterday. Mm -hmm. I think you said they're at two ETH today. So call it six grand. Um, yesterday, $7,500. Um, right after they mm -hmm. launched, they were going around one to 1 1.2 ETH. Um, mm -hmm. So there's been some variability there. You know, there there might be some sense that this will actually go up. So initially, I think there were 380 for sale only. And that's mm -hmm. why it went up. as those started going away, yep. it started pumping up. And I think yesterday there were fewer than 150 available. And that's when it's getting up to there to like two and a half ETH. So that's probably going to make a few people say, oh, I've got five or six of these. I'm going to start making these available. Now, yeah, the other yeah, thing there's we 372 about, for sale right now. Okay, so, so it's, it's gone back up because the pricing is yeah, and price. this conference is in two months. Two months, not yeah. even that. Um, I guess uh, yeah, it's about two months because it starts the nineteenth of May. There's a lot so of organizations going to want to be there, like this. I, I, exactly. Yeah, there's going to be corporate buyers who are going to come in. They're like, yeah, okay, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's seven thousand dollars. That's how we get in. Um, but it was just amazing to me. Out of over ten thousand, basically of 10,300, 10,000 are not available. They're not on the market. Yeah. What? And only right? 5,000 holders, right? Or 50, 5,600 holders. Exactly. So, so what's going to happen to these? They're going to go way up. This yeah. is not financial advice. Nothing that we talk about here is financial advice, but that would seem like the logical scenario. We had this, we had the price went yeah. up when there was a supply squeeze. It went down under 200 available. It's back up. And so once it hit two and a half ETH, and that must be why it came down again to a little over two ETH. Um, I, this is fascinating. And it, it, what we should expect from VCon, even though they've announced the speakers list, is we should expect them to announce other things that are going to make oh, yeah. it even better. So like yes. musical musical performances, special experiences, integrations with big projects. Uh, so, yeah. This yeah, and the fact that they know which of these tokens went to which vFriends. So you could be, a, there could be something interesting here where like, oh, hey, you held a, a mammal. Anyone who holds a mammal gets to go to this event or anyone who holds a spectacular yes. goes to this event. Um, there's lots of like really clever things they could do to make it a lot of fun. And yeah. And, and the other thing he said is that 
when the art part of the art reveal thing is he wants these to be collectible even after the conference so you'll still retain the stub the artwork afterwards um and he wants those to have value to people yeah i think better than a po app yeah right something like and that who knows what they could do in the future like he could they could decide i haven't heard anything like this but he could decide in five years like hey if you have stubs to the first five vcon like you get to mint this thing or to do something else like there's some neat neat stuff there well so most of the most of the vcon or the v friends um were sold at 0.5 ETH. Now, last May, that was pretty expensive. So it would have been 2,200 at the peak, I think, 2,300 US mm -hmm. uh, each. Uh, but also, I mean, look at it right now. You're looking at 6K. So again, this is this idea of if you hold the tokens, we talked about that. We'll, we'll talk about that now. You hold the, you hold yeah. the token, the NFT, and you get some benefit. And look at ApeCoin, yes. right? So anyone who had oh, a mutant yeah. was getting um, somewhere between you know twelve and thirty thousand dollars, depending on when they sold, or no, somewhere between fifteen and thirty thousand um, dollars. Anyone who had um, a, 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 one of the original apes was getting somewhere between what would have been seven seventy-five and one hundred fifty thousand. Uh, yes. Over the last week, wow! Plus, I, mutant, plus mutant serum way back when, plus a kennel club way back when. So that initial two hundred fifty dollars for the ape at mint is worth about a half a million bucks. Yeah, we're gonna have to do this. We're gonna have to do a session on power law, you know. And so we're not seeing this yeah. with all the projects, but if you look at the projects that succeed, you really oh. reap the benefit from holding. This has been a huge part of my strategy here is what are the projects that consistently keep delivering? And it's why I've held on to my ape for so long and why I've been super bullish on VFriends. And Punk Comics is another one that is is giving out a lot of stuff. And Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, and I think Punk Comics has got a lot more coming. I mean, they just raised $100 million yeah. in venture finance. We just got our new, I just got the new gift coat. Gift three came out. Oh, what is it? So it was a, it's a, it was a drift NFT, the artist drift that does, um, oh, he's that yep. photographer that does like skyscraper stuff. It's him and Gary V in a helicopter over New York city. And then you get a pair of vans that have, and, and you get the vans Gary too. V characters all over them. Yeah. Like you're getting so, physical vans. Yeah. So, so far has been the, the creatures, print the physical print and the nft there's been another uh mini drop of an nft there was the jacket that's selling for like 1200 on ebay for anyone that's for the few people that have sold it the profound jacket and then now the shoes and the drift it's already the gift code's already been paid for just in those first three gifts well they and went this down thing goes on for three so they years were, they were they came down to five ETH, I think, was the lowest price. Yeah, that was the floor. And those that's all that was left at the end. Those were sitting on the floor for a while. I and know, at that time, like, he made this comment where he's like, I'm going to make everyone regret not getting one of those. And that was I was trying to get one. I was, I like, was like, like, the price went down because the ETH, ETH plummeted. ETH dropped. Yeah. Like a lot in the middle of that. Those things were sitting there. At yeah. some point, I think they went down to like 12.5 US dollar equivalent. And I remember trying, like, oh my gosh, I wasn't paying close enough attention. I was trying to get ETH in my wallet, and I, like, yeah. I just couldn't accumulate that much. And then all of a sudden, in hours, they were all gone. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's that turned out to be a pretty good one. Okay, so I want to bring up back up ApeCoin, but th my point wasn't actually that people got free stuff. We talked about the, or we got you know made free money sure. last week. Although, yes, that is a key point. I'm interested in how stable it is. I thought it would pull back yes. to like five or six. I think people are waiting to see what the, uh, the other side, uh, land is. And like, I must, I, I think they're assuming you could use ape coin for it. I'm guessing that it's going to be something like you do have to pay for it, but if you use, um, you, you know, it's 2000 ape coin for yeah. you know, a plot or 500 or something like that. So that, so that basically they're saying, Hey, anybody who held on, even if you had a mutant, you can buy your parcel. With the money we yeah. we just that makes sense yeah yeah 
I think there's a few things at work here. One is I, I think some of the we know that the culture of that community is is very hodl um, focused, and I think there is a the more they give us, the more it's like should should you get rid of anything? Because who knows what's going to happen if you if you get rid of this coin and then that's the only way to buy land or or and then it spikes. But the other thing I think that's interesting here is everyone the non the folks that just on the periphery of nfts are just learning about it pretty much everyone knows about apes or has heard a little bit about apes when you start to recognize nfts you see that um they know they missed it they can't get in even the kennel clubs way out of any most people's price range especially if you're new you're not going to come and drop 40 grand on a on a jpeg of a dog, dog. Um, <laughs> i think coins the ape coins are a way for people to get in to this project without dropping a ton of cash. And well, actually there's another way mm -hmm. because we saw from the leak that it looks like the land sale is going to go for one ETH each. Yes. So that too. But I think a lot of people that are, it's what we saw with the Doge coin on Reddit, right? When everyone hopped on Doge and it went nuts. Um, I think for people in the space and I know I I know there's lots of Doge enthusiasts. I don't want to upset those folks, but a lot of that coin never made a whole lot of sense to me. Uh, but lots of pe people jumped all over it and the price went bananas. And I think there are folks out in the world that are looking at things like uh, the GME, the GameStop stuff, the Doge stuff, and Ape is the thing they're hearing. And it's they might be hopping in. I'd be really curious to see how many of the holders of Ape are the people that have been buying it recently are are new and are not necessarily already holders of a, yeah, a big just, bag of NFTs. There is a chain analysis you could do to like match coins to tokens. Mm -hmm. um, that would be interesting. Yeah. All right. Just one more thing on, um, we're not going to really go into other side because that thing was amazing, but, but um, yes, I don't have awesome. time today. Uh, but I did, I did want to bring up this one other thing around metaverse. We talked about, Mayweather doing his own metaverse, a bunch of people thinking about their own metaverse. Well, Mayweather just announced that he was very thankful he was able to invest in Yuga Labs. He has his own marketplace for musicians and people in the creative community. Some thought that maybe he's going to bring that into the other side, the Board Ape Yacht Club meta metaverse. Uh, and so I think that's interesting. This is like, obviously, you know, you could think about this as mm -hmm. a project because we're putting in that. He's also a big brand, uh, Tim Bland. Uh, so attaching himself to one of the hottest properties out there. So I think that's good for Board Ape. Um, I think it's be better for Board Ape than Madonna coming in. In fact, I think it's... I, she's still a creator, but maybe not a, as prolific as she once yeah. was. Tim Bland still really... Yeah. He might, some people might argue he's past the prime of his career, but he's, I don't think that's the case. I think he's got a lot, lot left. Yeah. And I mean, look, he's, he's a, on the producing side of things, right? So he's yes. dialed into that and who knows who's, who he can bring in and do really interesting um, collaborations with and, and that sort of stuff. Okay, so we have something else fun we uh, talk about, Frosties. Mm -hmm. uh, so Frosties was a rug pull from earlier this year. Uh, let's see. They pulled down a million dollars in an hour. No, it might've been less than that, 20 minutes. And then four hours later, they shut down the website, the Discord, everything, and walked off. Uh, then apparently they spread the ETH around from that. I think they, what is it? Is it Tornado that they use? Yeah. Uh, they make it so you can't traffic, track it. But guess what? It's on chain. Someone can figure this out. Well, um, some combination of the IRS and the FBI uh, said, oh, we're going to look at this. turns out that uh, they found the two 20-year-old founders and they have been arrested. So the, I think the word came from the IRS that basically the same rules apply to NFTs as an asset as would apply to real estate. And what people used to do is they used to have mm -hmm. these fake real estate scams where they would sell you land and say there was all these things about it. Now, sometimes the land didn't actually exist. You'd show, you'd show up there, you thought you bought something and someone else owned it. It was someone else's deed. But the other thing that they would have would be, yes, you owned it, but they said it was like this great piece of land near the ocean or on the, you know, 
on the water or something like that. And it's actually a swamp and it's designated as unbuildable and all mm -hmm. these other things. So that's a really interesting idea of people thinking that's the application of the wall. They're looking of the law. They're yeah. looking at applying these things in terms of real estate or other real assets. If you make promises, which they did, they said there would be a metaverse and all these follow on it, uh, drops and all these things. But then you say, and then you don't do it and you don't have some sort of track record of you trying to do it and then going into bankruptcy or something like that. You're going to be arrested for fraud. And, um, mm -hmm. I think just the money laundering, uh, the money laundering uh, charge caught, takes or, or can be up to 20 years. So wow. they could be looking at 20 plus years in prison for this, for this uh, fraud that they perpetrated. Yeah. I mean, ouch. Uh, this is a great, a great story to share with the folks who think there's still lots of uh, misconceptions about crypto, right? That it's a, uh, that it's used for illegal purposes and that it's untraceable. Like it's, it's, it is the exact opposite of that. And this is a, this proves that point. Um, the thing that sort of boggles my mind here is why they didn't just release it. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah, a, that's I, a hard lesson. I, I think it's like their intent was fraud from the beginning. So they just executed it as yeah. a very efficient fraud. And they thought yep. they wouldn't get caught, kind of like Rosal Khan didn't think she would get caught. Yeah. Um, so, okay. You know, it's just like if you're on chain, it's like a really bad place to do money laundering or fraud because there's an yep. immutable record of everything that's happened and people can figure this mm -hmm. out. So, uh, this goes back to the idea like NFTs are bad, crypto is bad. Oh, why? And then you, you give them an answer to say, oh, that's really not a big deal. That's not a big deal. And then they're like, mm -hmm. money laundering, mic drop. Yeah. You're like, oh, no, actually, it's like the best place to track money laundering. Exactly. So much easier yeah. because anybody can do it. Um, yep. Okay. So we have another um, we have another thing. This is, we think, not a fraud. Uh, but Mechaverse, they were supposed to bring out the Mechabots. I think it was yesterday. They can't. Their Discord got hacked. Uh, they... Apparently, they the founders have said all the roles were changed. They they deleted all the channels. <laughs> I don't know, like what the purpose of that would be. It was it just malicious? Was it that they are trying to hold it for ransom? You know, they backed it up somehow. Uh, I have to say, the first thing that crossed my mind, given the fraught history of Mechaverse, was that maybe the founders were behind on this or, or we're behind on doing the mecha bots, which was a promise thing. And this was a way to buy themselves more time. I, I, I want to think more highly of the founders. And, and so, but this was, I just want to share that. That's the first thing I thought. I'm like, Oh yeah. Yeah. It's like the slow rug pull. <laughs> um, I don't know what your thoughts are on it. I mean, I, I, we're in a weird time, right. Where there's, there's still lots of, um, that kind of thing going on. And obviously there was the story early on with Mechaverse and the questions about how the stuff was minted and why certain people ended up with the, the rarities they had. Um, so it, it does sort of leave the doubt there to, this is a, well, I brought this up before too, this weird world we live in of like, sometimes a lot of transparency, transparency, but not complete transparency is, is bad because it, just leaves so much room for for speculation and wonder and you have enough information to piece together all sorts of theories as to what's going on um yeah i don't know i i, I honestly i haven't really been following this project that closely since the stuff that happened yeah previous um i had sure. one i ended up selling it and yeah i absolutely. don't know so, yeah it's a very ahead. weird it's a very weird thing Okay, so you wanted to talk about average creatures. This is a new drop. Yes. Tell yeah. us about that. I get a lot of questions from people that are collecting like, oh, hey, how do you decide what to get? And I think there's a couple, obviously there's tons of strategy in this NFT game, right? And, and people that are here to flip and to try and hop on what's, what's trending. I, I personally like um, that. I, I, I'm not good at that. And I, it, You're a value investor. You are me. the Warren Buffett of 
health I, issues. Yeah, I would. I will not claim that uh, until the dust settles on everything. Um, uh, yeah, I like. I love the art. There's a lot of NFTs and there's a lot of PFP projects, and a lot of them are kind of derivatives of you know the bazillion of ape themed projects that we see, for example. Um, and I'm not any criticism of that necessarily because each one of those projects is trying to achieve its own thing. But these were just super original to me. And I sort of fell in love with the artwork. This is an artist who has been an artist long before uh, they got into the NFT game and does some amazing photography. These NFTs are made up of sculpted characters made with mixed media and then photographed. It just looks it does I matter. love stuff. I love the convergence of strange and wonderful, like stuff that's strange and wonderful is my, I, I love that stuff. And this fits squarely into that category. So I heard about the drop early and I was following them on Twitter and doing what little I could to try and help share the project to get, get some visibility. Um, I bought a bunch of these and I'm super excited. This was one of those reveals where I was really pumped to see each one, like, take my time and go one by one and refresh the metadata and, and see what I got. It was just fun. Yeah. I like it. If you're looking for a project that's relatively cheap to get into and you just like art, I would check it out. Uh, it is below mint price. Right it is it's, below it's, mint price. And I should say like, you know, not financial advice, but you can understand how committed or how, how much Scott believes in this. He bought a bunch of them. They're at yes. half the mint price about, um, he's still really bullish on it. Um, and, and yeah, I think Absolutely, they're right now, yeah. like 1035 or something like that. So yeah. this might be a fun one to look at. Uh, it, it would be one that's yep. really easy to get into. Yeah. I like, I mean, not he's not pumping this. He's good. He's not selling. He's keeping all of this So No, I'm keeping mine. He will eventually in fact, I bought that. a, I bought a top 10 one that someone listed oh, in right. my opinion, yeah. way too low, the number three most rare. And I was super stoked about that. Uh, I don't think you can go wrong buying art from artists who are actually actively making art. Like if you find an artist who's been at it for five years. Yeah, that's true. Buy their shit. Like they're they're You're supporting them for one thing, which feels good. If you like the art, you get the art. So who cares what the price does? Cause you have this neat thing, but even in terms of an investment, like, yeah, artists well, don't suddenly yeah. stop making art after five years. They keep they will, they will keep making art the rest of their lives. And well, and even the, like it, and this looks like it, this is so well packaged. It looks yeah, like a project yeah. that there's a long term commitment to. Like this is not mm -hmm. trivial. What was created, uh, yep. so it would be hard for me to see someone like abandon this and to say, "Yeah, I'm done with that." Moving on. Eventually, that might happen, but it strikes me that there's a yeah. lot of runway for this. And I don't own one. Yeah. I, I, I might yeah. soon, but I don't own one. Yeah. Um, That's cool. Like, I, and the artist has a foundation spot too. Even if you don't, don't want to buy it, if you just want to look at cool art, check it out. Their, their artwork is is really fantastic. Um, yeah, that was it. It was the first one in a while I've been really excited about. So Cool. All right, we're going to finish on Xcopy. Mm -hmm. So Xcopy is, to me, He's to street art what Banksy is. Um, that's like the best analogy. Talk about that before, yeah. So, or no, he's to what Banksy is to street art. He is to NFTs. Uh, sort of this native mm -hmm. NFT people. I think some people might pick some other folks, but that's to me. I, I just think he, yeah, he embodies and grocks the culture of NFTs of like early days of NFTs, maybe better than anybody. Mm -hmm. um, he's sold pieces. I think the last one he sold was like six point six million. Um. And he's like, right click and save man and all these things. Okay, so there's a lot of people mm -hmm. who like X, X copy for many reasons. It's art, what he means to the space. And they haven't been able to get any of his art because it's so expensive. So he did an open edition. He did it on Nifty Gateway, which pissed some people off. The open edition pissed some people off because they want to they know what the rarity is going to be. But sure. here was the hitch. Open edition, open for 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. So... How many NFTs can X copy sell in 10 minutes at one ETH? 7,300. Uh, so I don't know what gas did at that point, but in any event, or like how that, how the transaction fees mm -hmm. were at that time, but a lot were, a lot were purchased in that period. Uh, they're mm -hmm. just over as of doing this 24 hours later, they're just over mint price. They haven't like gone crazy because there's 7,000 of mm -hmm. them. Um, yep. But uh but a lot of people wanted these. It's great to have mm -hmm. X copy wallet, I would think. 
um, open edition. I don't know. You bought one. What do you think? I did. I did buy one. I, to me, I think I've said this before, but I, I have this, I feel like buying NFTs right now, we're buying paintings during the Renaissance. Like there are artists here that are going to be, there it is back there. These are relevant. It's just a relevant artist. I, I like the art as well, but the more you get into collecting and start to fall in love with this space and technology, I, I just, I wanted this. <laughs> that, that's what it I boils think, down I think to. It was, I think it was a brilliant move on his part uh, because he was becoming so rarefied. Like how do you get more people involved? Mm -hmm. And uh, Pac just did this with merge. Like you could, you know, there's mm -hmm. this whole gamification thing with Pac is always like way too complicated, Yeah. but there was a way for people to get a Pac piece in December that wouldn't have, that were priced out of all his other stuff. And I, yeah. maybe poets yeah. come down since then, but, um, but I think X copy had this, he was trending towards being unattainable. And when you become yeah. unattainable, people want it, but then like other people don't feel connected to you. He just got yeah. thousands of people. I don't remember how, how it's broken down yet, but he thousands of people that are connected to him now because it's in their wallet. Uh, mm -hmm. I think this is the idea of Bored Ape where you couldn't get in because yeah. the apes went too expensive, but then you had the dogs, you had the mutants, now you have mm -hmm. coin. I think it's really smart. I, I believe that a lot of people are going to want this piece and actually it's his first and maybe it'll be his only open edition ever. I mean, if you think about that yeah, and that could yeah. be, it could be significant as well. Yeah. And the other thing here that we don't, you know, we, we talk about a little and the, we, we just don't know yet because everything is still, we're still figuring it out, but these could be, someone could build a whole thing around burning in the future that could, you know, he might release a burning mechanic or some other future thing where it says burn this NFT to get to mint another. In a way, artists can start to use all these open editions. And if they have a bunch of NFTs out there, they can use burning as a mechanism to reduce supply, right? And and to reward folks who got in previous. Uh, there's so yeah, many think, interesting think about implications. What's happening with um, with book games? Right. So yeah, you burn exactly. some and you get access to something unique. Um, I could see X copy doing something like bring five mm -hmm. of these to the table, burn them, and then you get access to this other thing or you yeah. get this other thing. Um, well, and the other crazy thing is it doesn't even have to be X copy. This is the layer that I'm really excited about is to see like what happens when a new project possible. launches and says, yeah, burn these to get into our thing. Um, yeah, see, someone, think who, it, it, someone who owns 10 of these could get like a thousand of them yep. removed and then the price of all of them would go yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, or just the mix up. The way Aussie bats did the the hybrid bats where if you held a, you know, if you held an ape or something, you could bite the ape and then get this new hybrid Aussie bat ape yes. um, NFT. I think we're going to start to see a lot of creativity around those sorts of things in the future too. So, um, Well, I'm excited to yeah. see x copy do this in the traditional art world no one would have thought of someone coming out with editions uh mm -hmm. you know larger editions like mostly one-on-ones we do editions like everyone would be like that's fine i think it's really clever mm -hmm. it's even more clever in this space uh yeah. but that's what that's all the time we have for today so scott what are you yeah. promoting today uh i would say check out average creatures that's the okay. one i was just talking about it's it's great yep give it a look okay and I'm going to tell people to go to Niftorian.com uh, because we're going to have an announcement about what we're doing with Nif the Niftorian project. But the thing that most people here will be even more interested in, because Niftorian is one project, right? And it's an artist-centric project. We're bringing 14 new artists to the blockchain uh, with new projects, NFT projects. We have a demo day coming up this week. That's going to be a little harder for you to get access to. But we're, we have a new one coming up, which is going to be... Um, another NFT artist accelerator. We sort of bring them through. We help them refine their things. Then these artists bring these new projects out. If you're part of the Niftorian community, you actually see these early. You get to interact with the artists, maybe even maybe even participate with them, collaborate with them if, if you're interested in. So we've been incubating this. You know, we've been out there, but sort of in stealth for a while. We're going to start really pushing this thing out. So go to niftorian.com see what we're doing. Look at the artists that have gone through our accelerator. We have some things where we're going to really scale this up and look at some of the other things over the next week. We're going to reveal new utility starting on Thursday. So uh, Thursday of next week, which is the 31st of March. 
depending on when you watch this. Uh, so that's what I'm promoting. Scott Leach, thank you for so much today. Yeah, thank you. Happy to be here. Okay, folks. Thanks for coming out today. Until next week, happy hunting. Thank you.